It's time for the round leather game. Um, that's known as football, and that's what we'll do right about now. We'll start with transfers, and it has to be Kaspar Schmeichel who we'll start with. That's um, the new OG Nice goalkeeper mm -hmm. who has made um, a stunning move to the French club after 11 successful years at Leicester City, where he won the Premier League, the FA Cup, the Community Shield as well. What, what do you make of this move? I mean, after 11 years at Leicester, mm -hmm. is it the right move? He's 35, but he's still a top goalkeeper. Yes, he, he, he's still a top goalkeeper. I was actually shocked when I saw the move because mm -hmm. I was like, uh, is she, there, why, there was no, is, <laughs> mm -hmm, <laughs> the, there was no need for him to actually new move. New challenge. Mm -hmm. um, probably new challenge going to OG Nice. Is, exactly. It's not really a challenge that I, like, I would see. It's not like they're competing for anything mm -hmm. that's very, very big like that. So I, 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 I really don't know. Probably he had some stuff he's facing or he's just very tired of Leicester or probably he has some internal issues that he's they, they're not telling us about. Yes. But it's, it's okay. It's, it's a good move for probably retirement soon. <laughs> That's what After I'm 479 thinking. matches at the King's Power Stadium, you now have um, Schmeichel, the son of Manchester United's legend, um, you know, legendary goalkeeper, um, making that move now. Um, let's see how it pans out. For OGNS, they will be you know playing their trade in the Europa League. So. Um, he will still have European football at his disposal in that sense. Let's move away from there now and talk about another signing. Um, that has to do with Chelsea. And his name is Kani Chuku Emeka. That's a name that is definitely familiar to <laughs> Nigerians. Kani Chuku Emeka for £20 million from mm -hmm. Aston Villa. Um, Chelsea have made a fourth, successive, um, a fourth signing for the summer after Ryan Sterling from Manchester City, who cost them £50 million. Khalidu Koulibaly from Napoli, who cost £34 million, and then um, Gabriel Slonina um, from Chicago Fire in the uh, Major League Soccer, that's in America, from £12 million. That's a goalkeeper, by the way. Mm -hmm. Fourth signing, midfielder, mm -hmm. um, you think is uh, one for the future or one that can really have an impact you know, immediately in the team. It's just a team. Mm -hmm. I think it's for the future. I, I, don't, I don't see him benching Kante, benching Kovacic. Or Yogino or, or your judge, yeah. You know, there's even Conor Gallagher that is trying uh -huh. to get him uh, well. yeah, get into. I really don't know why. Probably, I, I think the coach probably needs him. And the also, the, the, of course, the squad depth is there. And the way Chelsea signed him, it was very, very, very silent move. <laughs> <laughs> probably because of Buck, I don't know, but mm -hmm. it was a very silent <laughs> move. So. So I, I, when I saw it, I was like, okay, it, he, at the midfield, probably, yes, because there is Jojo is, um, Jojo is 30, mm -hmm. at 30, 31, Kant is the same thing, Kovac is the same thing. So we have three people that are aging, that are yes. very good aging at the same time. The same time. So I think 18 years old, and he's, a, he's, he's one of the rated midfielders in England. Mm -hmm. So I think young he, stars, mm -hmm, yeah. young stars in, in, England, in England, sorry. So I think he's one of the, I think he's a good signing for Chelsea, a future signing. Okay, let's see how it is. He made 12 appearances for Aston Villa last season in top flight and had just one year left before making the move to Chelsea. Let's see if he can get you know more playing time at Stamford mm -hmm. Bridge. Let's talk about the transfer market because that's what you know is on right about now. A name has been in the market for the last um, few days and wouldn't go away. Mark Cucurella, that's mm -hmm. the name. Manchester City tried, um, you know, uh, made a, a bid of 30 million pounds, but Brighton Hove Albion held to their prized asset. Um, signaling 50 million pounds mm -hmm. as the intent. Now, uh, reports have it that Chelsea are on the verge of completing a 52 million pound move for um, the defender. He's a left full back, by mm -hmm. the way. Um, what does this make for Chelsea? You look at the left back, Marco Alonso, and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. You think this would be another decent addition to Chelsea? Yes, it, it, it's a decent addition. Looking at um, the Chelsea's team, generally mm -hmm. has. Is still not set because there are some players that still want to go, exactly. and the transfer we do is 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 not closed, and a lot of clubs are not yet bidding for them. Mm -hmm. So it, it brings the whole club in a very kind of stagnant place. So Kukure is coming in. I I hope probably what they told him is um, Alonso is going and Emerson is going. So mm -hmm. that's probably what is in his mind, and I think yes. they should go. But I'm not really seeing any club bidding for them, so I don't know how Chelsea is doing it. So although um, he can play the, the left side of the of a three-man defense, defense, so yeah. I think that's where Chelsea is mo mainly going to use him into. Is that's the best position that Tuchel is probably probably thinking of taking him to replace Rudiger. To replace Rudiger, of okay. course, of Green. So I think that's the only thing. 
I think it's worth 50 million pounds or 50 million No, well. no, of course. The market, <laughs> the, market, the market is overpriced uh -huh. for now. Almost all players are overpriced, in this, okay. especially in this market. So Brighton is holding out because they don't want to sell. Yeah. And if you, want to, if you want them to sell, you have to convince them with a, a, a very good money. With a very good they sold money. Ben White for 50 million pounds yeah, 50 last, million last season. Also, so I think that, um, and Mass is the kind of thing that don't really want to buy overpriced players. Uh -huh. they, don't, they don't really like it. They bring a value that they think is appropriate for a player and if you are not receiving that value they are okay with it okay. and they are not they, it's not that they actually really need the left forward. Uh, yeah, they, 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 they have um Nathan they have Ake, Ake they yeah. Nathan Ake. even Cancelo can play mm -hmm. there sometimes so they are still okay for but now i think th this is good for chelsea i think it's a very good move for chelsea seeing that there are no much options options okay. mm -hmm. let's see how that pans out for chelsea football club remember um news broke out you know um few hours back that the move was completed and Brighton had to um, respond saying that there is no agreement mm -hmm. yet. But um, reports have it firmly that Chelsea are on the verge of completing that track. Now let's turn our focus to the Premier League. I said earlier on the show that the Premier League will begin in roughly about 27 hours or 28 hours from now. And um, that's with Crystal Palace hosting Arsenal at Hellos Park talking about the opening match of the 2022-2023 season. So our attention definitely is turned towards, um, you know, assessing the new boys, if you want to call them that, or the newly promoted teams to the Premier League. Talking about Bournemouth, you have Fulham and you also have Nottingham okay. first. But we'll start with Bournemouth. Bournemouth, yes, they've not mm -hmm. really made um, great signings in the market. But mm -hmm. from what we saw last season at the Championship down to, you know, the Premier League, you think mm -hmm. they have a squad that can compete or you see them um, as relegation candidates again? I, I think they will struggle. They, okay. they, they will struggle this season. Looking, looking at them, they, they have squad depth probably for championship. The kind no, of not for Premier League. League. For Premier League. Okay. Um, also, um, this, your, these new clubs have a way of making waves in the like first three, four games. They, they go back to their <laughs> <laughs> normal position after. after. Okay. But I think Bournemouth will struggle. Not seeing them make great signings that can actually push them to stay in the Premier League. Will, will they survive? That's something I don't know. I'm not sure of that. Okay. I'm not sure of that. But I think they will struggle. And if they can't manage to win as many home games as possible, possible, then they are going to relegate. Okay, let's turn our attention now to um, the champions of the you know um, championship last season, Fulham, mm -hmm. who um, have record goal scorer Alexandra Mitrovic, okay. you know, um, in their squad. They lost Fabio Carvalho, who is right there on your screen, to Liverpool, but they still have their record goal scorer. Talking about Mitrovic, who is not new to the mm -hmm. Premier League. Fulham, they've that, that it's almost like on a regular visit, they go <laughs> come back. <laughs> yeah, though. You think this time around they can really have an impact and stay in the Premier League? Yes, I think they can because looking at the championship, they, mm -hmm. they, they played the championship like they were like Bayern in the mm -hmm. whole championship, so they they beating everyone, beating everyone. everybody. So I think they can, they actually have a good, a good, um, a good chance of staying if they can keep up from that form that they were, okay. they were last season. I think uh, and should. the bulk of the team, they've not really made the significant moves too. Yes, I. Um, Although they have Leno, mm -hmm. the goalkeeper from us now. Yes, I think they, they really didn't really um, lose any much of their players. Yes. I think that's one thing they have been able to. They've been able to keep a lot of their players. I think that is very very important for you, especially if you, if you have a very good team mm -hmm. from Championship coming into Premier League, and having a striker like Mitrovic that has been in, in, in Premier League, I think it would be an easy World way for him, to, exactly. for him to get into it and prove himself. Okay, let's see for Fulham. They got in some man as well from, you know, Shakhtar Donetsk. So let's see if um, these signings, coupled with former Arsenal goalkeeper Brent Leno, will them, you know, improve the squad and keep them afloat when it comes to the relegation battle for, you know, the coming season. The final team we'll be reviewing is Nottingham first, and they've been busy in the market uh, making, you know, great signings from our own, um, you know, striker, Taiwo Awoni, that's the mm -hmm. Nigerian striker, to Manchester United, um, you know, product. Talking about Issa Lingard, they've been busy. That's Awoni mm -hmm. on the screen. So you think of all three, Nottingham Forest looks like the team that has really made you know decent signings in the market. You think that will be enough to keep them afloat? It, it's not enough. It's it's more for the signings to actually prove themselves and mm -hmm. be on top at every match. At every match they will, they will get into because they are not the only ones making signings. Even yes. the Premier League Premier League teams. Almost all Premier League teams, if not all, are actually making signings Simon. to actually boost themselves. And you look at everybody and you're like, okay, who's actually going to really get this? Yes. So I think for them, they, they, they have actually made good signings. I think they have storage now. They have yes. they have Linga. They have um, Taiwa Taiwa winning. Winning. So I think if these players can actually 
be 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 um, very good, not um, losing form throughout the season. Mm -hmm. I think they should probably be even in, be in the top ten. Top ten. Yeah, okay, I'm let's see how that pans 10. out. Well. We're out of time. You know the way it is sometimes when you're enjoying yourself on the show. Time just has a way of saying, time up, time up, time up. But we'll have to leave you with um, this news from the world of golf. And it's about, you know, the PJ Tour and the controversial um, Saudi Bat 54 um, Invitational Series. And that's about Phil Mickelson as well as 10 other golfers who have um, filed a lawsuit against them, the PJ Tour. And it's an antitrust lawsuit where... They, you know, um, are slamming the PGA Tour for suspending them indefinitely. Remember, 16 players were banned um, by the PGA Tour for, you know, their um, breakaway or their decision to defect to the Saudi Bath um, 54 Golf Invitational Series. And as a result of that, um, some of these players are not even certain of playing on the tour again. You remember, the DP World Tour, which is the European Tour, have also joined forces with the PGA Tour to punish these players um this is another legal tour so that the pga tour is involved in remember the united states department of justice is still investigating the body for uh, what it calls bullying and other forms of um, anti-competitiveness against the 54 invitational series it will be interesting to see how this pans out but anyways we're out of time thank you so much for our time on the show thank you for thank you so much